Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to make your processor, especially if it's a Ryzen 5000 series, quieter, cooler, and faster. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to make your Ryzen 5000 series processor faster, cooler, and quieter. All those things all in one and potentially saving you a little bit on your electricity bill. So we're going to be using the Ryzen Master software, which now has a built-in curve optimizer feature, which is applicable to Ryzen 5000 series processors, which in effect will be undervolting your processor and choosing the best options for your motherboard and processor combination, taking into account things like heat, power, and all those kinds of usual things. So anyway, that's enough of me rabbiting on about it. Let's take a look at the computer and see how we can do it. Okay, so this is my desktop PC, so we're using a Ryzen 5800X processor, and I've just run a Cinebench score. This is with the optimizer turned off, this is with our factory defaults on the motherboard. So we're currently getting a score of 14014, and as you can see with the real-time analytics here, so the package temperature, coolest we've got, is down to 39 degrees, now I should say it is about 30 degrees in the room today, it's particularly warm. Uh, we got to 72.8, this was just a single run. So it's generally getting very hot very quickly, and if I'd have left it running longer, I'm sure it would have gone up to the uh, the mid to high 70s, possibly even getting in towards the 80s. And also, things to look at is our package power. So we're using 110 watts as it stands, and you can see the highest frequencies achieved on the various cores, etc., etc. Anyway, this is really boring stuff, so let's uh, get rid of that, close that down, and we'll get rid of Cinebench for now. So what you're going to need to do is install the latest version of Ryzen Master, which uh, we'll put some links in the video description so you can click on those directly. Once it's installed, you just agree to the terms, conditions, etc. Then you can double click on it and open it up. So this is what Ryzen Master looks like. You have to agree to the settings, etc, etc. So this is the main interface. Now I've set it to the advanced mode. You can use it also in basic view. So this is what basic view looks like. You can do the same sort of thing here. So you've got the options here for the curve optimizer mode. So currently it's set to off, as you can see. You've got all cores and you've got per core. And you've got the option there for start optimizing. So if you want to, you can just click on all cores, click on start optimizing, and it'll do the job for you. But I actually like to see how it's doing. So let's go into our advanced view and we'll go down to this bit on the section on the left. So curve optimizer, and again, same sort of thing. So you've got your curve optimizer mode off all cores or per core. So you can choose how you want to do it. All cores is probably the best for beginners. Once you've highlighted that, just click on Start Optimizing. Now you'll get a message now saying that it's going to try different things, there'll be restarts, etc, etc. Uh, this can take a long time, so uh, we will be fast forwarding through most of this, but you can get an idea of how it all works. So click on Start Over. We have actually done uh, an optimization previously and it worked out very well, but I've reset it just so we can see how the process goes. Currently my offset was set to minus 27, so that is minus 27 millivolts. So that is undervolting the processor. Effectively, what you could do is just put that manually into the BIOS, which uh, maybe we'll take a look at for the Ryzen 3000 and older processors if you want to. Let me know if you want to see how that goes. Uh, but we're going to click on Start it's Over. So now what it's going to do is it's going to try various different types of uh, setting, different frequencies, voltages, all that kind of stuff. You can see the gauges on the top here, and you can keep an eye on your temperatures. So at the moment, we've already reached uh, 81 degrees. And this is actually with a pretty beefy cooler on our processor, although this particular processor only has one CCX unit, so it does get quite toasty quite quickly, but we'll be able to remedy that. I'm pretty sure that's going to hit around about 85 degrees Celsius, and I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to get that down to somewhere in the region of about 65, so we might be able to knock off about 20 degrees, somewhere around that range. Um, again, it is pretty warm in here today, so we'll see how things go. But yeah, you can see what's going on at the bottom in the right hand side there. It says optimizing the system for best performance. Estimated time left is 42 minutes. Now we're not obviously going to go through all that with you. So we'll fast forward this and we'll come back when it's done. We'll run some tests. Okay, so that was a uh, pretty long 40 minutes or so actually doing the testing. It's certainly got the uh, temperature in the room up a little bit more. It's still ridiculously hot. Uh, thanks to Ugly Bob for the uh, temperature monitor. Appreciated. And it's, uh, it's getting a workout today. So we have done the uh, curve optimizer 
as you've probably seen from the b-roll if not you've possibly seen it now uh, speed it up of course because it was a, a long-winded task when it's done all you need to do is click on the apply button and then it'll ask you to reboot the system again i think i've probably got some b-roll of that as well i uh, got to the point where i just got bored of actually recording it but now is the time where we can actually take a look at the results so let's head over to the pc now and we'll take a look at the updates live Okay, so the PC is uh, back up and running. As you can see here, we've got our hardware monitor running. So we're looking at our Ryzen 7 5800X. We've completed the Ryzen Master. Once it's actually done and it's been set, it doesn't annoy you every time and actually you have uh, the user account control come up. It just defaults and applies those settings to your BIOS. So you could potentially, if you want to, uninstall Ryzen Master after you've done this, and it should, I believe, still leave those settings in place. But I've not tried that yet. Maybe I'll take a look at that at a later date. Anyway, so temperature-wise, we're down to 38.5, which, considering the room is currently 31 degrees, roughly, uh, so we're about 7 degrees, 7 or 8 degrees over the ambient temperature in the room, which I think is absolutely fine. The fans are basically uh, silent, so you can see the RPMs there, they're uh, you know, just ticking over nicely. Talking of ticking, there is a clock right next to me, so I apologise for that. So yeah, that is uh, it's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to want to do now is to fire up Cinebench. So I'm going to load up Cinebench, this is the uh, the Windows Store version of it, R23. And all I'm going to do is just run a, uh, a single multi-core test, which is what I did previously. We might get a little bit of heat soak if we run it longer, but this should give us an indication of how well it's doing. So last time I believe we were getting uh, somewhere in the 70s, maybe 72, 73 degrees. So hopefully we've dropped a, few, a degree or two already. Yeah, 70.9 we seem to be stabilising. Maybe we'll hit 71 shortly. Doesn't seem to be running out of control. I did notice when doing this, it did undervolt the processor this time to minus 21, rather than being minus 27. So that may have a slight bearing on it. And also, since we uh, started recording a little bit earlier, it's now coming up towards half past one. So the, uh, the sun has now come over this side of the room, so it is a little bit warmer. We'll see what the results are like. Temperature-wise, we may not see a, a tremendous improvement on this particular setup, especially due to the heat as well at the moment, but hopefully the results will be better. So yeah, we've got an extra 100 points there on our Ryzen process. So we've got, uh, last time we had 14014, I believe. So now we've got 14179. So we're actually getting towards almost 200 points. And what we could do is if now we go into Ryzen Master, we'll open it back up. And we know that this processor can actually do it, but it didn't choose to, I think, again, because of the temperatures, etc. So let's go into Curve Optimizer, and let's uh, change this value. And we'll choose a manual offset, and let's change that to minus 27, because I have seen it do this before. So now what we can do is click Apply, which is going to be hidden down here. It's going to ask us to uh, restart Windows, so let's do that. Now at this point, because we've made a settings change, we're going to have to accept the user account control. And I'll load up Ryzen Master. And again, you have to go through the usual stuff, agreeing. So there we go, our all core value now is down to minus 27. Um, I think the temperatures are actually looking slightly better already. So let's uh, actually just close that down. Don't need that open anymore. We've got our hardware monitor. Okay, so there we go. So Windows is loaded and uh, the processor started settling down a little bit. And already down to 37.4 degrees. So again, we've taken off another degree, I believe that is, from what we had as our previous low. Although it does seem to be kind of hovering around that sort of low temperature now, not so much dipping into the 40s or going into the 40s so much. So that's a good sign. The fans are a little bit quieter again. That is going to be a thing. Obviously, if the fans were a constant rotational speed, then they are going to stay the same, but the temps would get lower. Because we're using a PWM, then obviously the fans are rotating slower to accommodate the lower temps, etc., etc. So you're kind of going to equalize at some point. If you want to see how well it's going to actually do, your best bet is probably set the fans at a constant RPM. And that way you'll see a true difference and you should see it drop even more. And we've just seen there, we're down to 37.1. So it is actually continuing to fall. And as Windows background tasks kind of silence themselves or some of the cores go to sleep, you will see that drop even further. But at the moment, 
we're just heading to 31 degrees C in the room, so we're uh, there are 37 degrees, so we're actually now six degrees over the ambient temperature in the room, which for a 5800X I think is massively impressive. So let's run another Cinebench and uh, see how that runs now. Now we've reduced the voltage even further. We could also as well experiment with dropping the voltage even lower because the Ryzen Master is a little bit on the kind of uh, pessimistic side, I would say. So potentially you could actually see better results if you lower it, but it does go more for stability than all out performance and kind of cooling. Anyway, we'll do a quick run of that. So what we get into now, we're hitting 73 degrees now. So actually we've, uh, we seem to be increasing temperature there a little bit. Not entirely sure why that is. And there we go so far. And that is our, actually that's the best score I've seen. And actually that is what I've had previously. I'm sure I had 14.619 or 14.610 previously, which actually is a massive jump. So we've, Undervolted again by about six millivolts, but it's actually allowed the processor to push itself harder, and we're getting an extra 600 points well, just over 600 points extra in Cinebench, which actually is quite a sizable jump. So, that is quite impressive. In fact, that's the difference between kind of some of the Intel processors in between their classes. So, yeah, not too shabby at all. Okay, so there you go. There are some of the results that I found. So, we've, uh, we've got more power. Definitely, we've uh, ascertained that, so we've got an extra 600 points in Cinebench, and also some of the clock speeds do seem to be better. Um, I'm sure I was seeing 4.625 roughly on all cores at some points, or arguably 4.6 gigahertz on all cores is pretty decent. Um, power usage wise, I don't know, arguably we are increasing the envelope, so we're getting higher frequencies, so we are using a little bit of extra power. I guess if you look at it in a kind of linear fashion, we're getting more for less. So previously we were using like 110 watts. So for an extra 10 watts up to 120, we're getting a little bit more performance out of it. So kind of beneficial. Your results will definitely vary. And in fact, due to the temperatures and also, I would probably suggest running Curve Optimizer a couple of times as well. Um, it will retain the previous settings as well. You can save those or jot them down. And if you want to, you can just write them down and manually put them into your BIOS, tweak it a little bit further. Try experimenting, dropping that voltage a little bit more, a little bit more until you get kind of crashes or instability, and then you can kind of raise it back up to find your optimum position. But yeah, I think it's, it's definitely quieter. That is definitely no sport. It is significantly quieter. The fan RPMs have adjusted by probably around about 200 RPMs on each fan in kind of idle and just normal general use. So that's excellent. So a quieter PC is always beneficial. Gain some points, like I said, and uh, power-wise, I guess that is slightly out there, but again, your results will vary and mine have previously, which is why I made this video, but it seems to be doing a lot worse today under these uh, conditions and humidity. The humidity is off the chart here, it really is. Speaking of which, I'm gonna go off and melt somewhere right now, but let me know if you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give the video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content this, then uh, hit subscribe and the chime notification, and you'll see more of like this in your inbox daily. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for sweating with me.